بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم وفقنا من الأقوال والأعمال لما تحبه وترضى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, إن شاء الله تعالى I've been to this masjid once before and last time I spoke in Somali so today I'm assuming it's going to be English because there's less Somali faces, insha'Allah ta'ala. Who was here when I came and I addressed the people in Somali? I spoke Somali the whole lecture. Who was there? You was there? Tayyib, <laughs> insha'Allah. Today we'll stick to the English, bi ta'ala. Insha'Allah, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through. If you want to say it's the tafsir of three verses or four verses of the Qur'an And these verses, they are verses in Surah At-Tawbah Surah At-Tawbah verse 117 I believe, five verses on لَقَدْ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُ فِي سَاعَةِ الْعُسْرَةِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا كَادَ يَزِيغُ قُلُوبُ فَرِيقٍ مِّنْهُمْ This verse, up to يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and the reason is the topic in which I've been given, which is repentance, sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is linked to these verses. So by the end, inshallah, you should understand these four verses. If you hear them, you'll be able to understand. And also will take the benefits of repenting to Allah Rabbul Izzah. This is not going to be a lecture, it will be more of a lesson. So I'm going to ask questions. And at the end, I'm going to hopefully see who's been listening as well, inshallah ta'ala. The story is as follows. The story is about a companion by the name of Ka'ab ibn Malik. Ka'ab ibn Malik. In the ninth year of Hijrah, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commanded his companions that there would be a battle which we call the Battle of Tabuk. The Battle of Tabuk was taking place. And the reason why it was slightly different is because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would usually not tell his companions when there's a battle about to take place. It would be something spontaneous. Like in this battle took place, why? The Muslims after the conquest of Mecca, they took back Mecca, Fatuh Mecca occurred. And then there was a war because of this reason. So the Messenger وسلم, he says to his companions, it's a slightly different circumstance. The numbers are going to be 10 to 1, the disbelievers are going to be more. Likewise, it's going to be in the hot desert. The Muslims perhaps don't have a lot of power, etc, etc, etc. So the Messenger وسلم, he goes to his companions and he says, guys, get ready, we're going to go to battle. Now, when the Messenger وسلم, he told his companions that this battle was going to take place, so prepare yourselves, there were two groups of people that stayed behind. Well, let me say that again. There were two groups of people that were known to stay behind, and then a third group of people. So there was two, and then there was a last group. The two groups of people that stayed behind were A, the sick, elderly, those that were excused, and B, the hypocrites. Those that were elderly and excused, they had excuses. Are they committing a sin by not attending? Are they committing a sin by not attending? If they are excused, if they are excused, they're sick, they're elderly, they are women, they don't have a lot of strength. Are they excused if they don't take part in the battle? Yes. Are they going to be sinning? No. So the first group of people, you say no problem with them. The second group of people are the hypocrites. They are a group of people that don't have excuses. They live amongst the Muslims and they act like they are Muslims. But deep down inside their heart, they're not. These people, we say they're negative. Then there's a third group of people. These people were those who were not hypocrites. Neither were they excused. But they didn't come and take part in the battle of Tabuk for personal reasons. Those personal reasons could have been what? Maybe they're scared. Would we say they're hypocrites if they're scared? La, they're not hypocrites necessarily. What about if 
They say, look, I'm just a bit busy with work or, you know what, I'm going to come later on. We're not going to call them hypocrites. It's not nifaq. The nifaq, especially nifaq amali that we're talking about here, is the nifaq of living amongst the Muslims as the people that come across as Muslims, but deep down they're not. Okay? You can give me some examples. Abdullah ibn Ubay, for example, ibn Salul. These people are not like that. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he commands his companions and there's this companion by the name of Ka'ab ibn Malik. Keep this name in your head. Because the man whose repentance we want to follow is him. Today I'm going to narrate his story. We're going to take the benefits, how to repent from sins and how he repented from this sin that he committed. What sin he committed. And then we'll look at the verses Allah sent down purely about him that until today we are reciting. Ka'ab ibn Malik, he had the excuse of, he said, First of all, as a background, he was of young age, he was strong, he was at the age of where he was very energetic, he was rich, he was a businessman, a tradesman, he was working. He was someone who wasn't an old man. He didn't have an excuse to not come. He didn't have a valid excuse such as him being sick or anything like that. But he also was not a hypocrite. So which category does he come into? What category of people does he come into that didn't take part in the battle? The third group. He's not a hypocrite. Neither does he have a shari reason to not attend. What he said was, look inshallah, I'll come. You guys go, I'll come after you inshallah. I'm just busy with work, I have things to do. I will come, just go. I'm going to prepare myself, you guys go. So the Messenger of Allah, he brought his companions together. They all prepared themselves. Then one day went by, two days went by. Ka'ab ibn Malik is still... In Medina. He's not taking part in the battle of Tabuk. Tabuk is outside of Medina. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, very strangely, he didn't realize who came and who didn't. We're speaking tens of thousands of people taking part in this battle. He doesn't have time to look and see every single person. So two days go by, Ka'ab is still not come. He said, I'm just going to prepare my armor, my shields, and then inshallah I'll come afterwards. Two days went by, three days went by. He did not take part. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, very coincidentally he said, where is Ka'ab? Out of all of the companions he could have said, he said, where is Ka'ab? I can't see him. And then a group of people from Bani Salama, which is a tribe, one of them got up, and he said, Ka'ab, he's just busy with money and business. He's rich. He doesn't need to come and fight. Is that something good they're saying about him or something bad? Right. Something bad. Then Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he got up. He said, Wallahi, all we know about Ka'ab is good. All we know about him is khair. And this is false accusations. I'm sure he has an excuse. Ala kulli hal, the battle took place. Ka'ab is where? At home in Medina. When the battle concluded, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned to Medina with his companions. And Ka'ab he says there were so many companions that came, he says, I can write a whole book just listing their names one by one. So there's too many people that came to that battle. So now they're on their way back, on the way back, on the way back. And as they are on their way back, the Messenger وسلم, from his Sunnah is that when he goes outside of the city or the country, or generally he goes on a travel, an expedition, when he returns, he wouldn't go straight home. The Sunnah is, and it's a very forgotten Sunnah nowadays, is that he goes to the masjid first, and then he prays two raka'ah, and then he goes to his home. So inshallah from now on, when you guys travel and you go abroad, when you come back, first go to the masjid before you go home. So what happened was, who were the people that were remaining in Medina? Hypocrites, that was one group. The excused second group. Who said that? Put your hand up. MashaAllah. The hypocrites, the excused and who? The last person. Ka'ab ibn Malik and two other men. The two other men are also mentioned in the Quran. But Ka'ab's repentance is very different to theirs. So what happened after that is, Ka'ab bin Malik, he heard that people are going to the masjid that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to, 
and they are all going in a line so they can give their excuses. So those that were excused are coming to do what? Give their excuses. Some of them, they were sick. Some of them, they're going to say, I was very old. Um, some of them were disabled, crippled. Some of them were blind, they couldn't see. These are all excused people. Karim Barak is saying a line, he said approximately 80 people is what I saw. They're all in a line, going to the Messenger Wasallam, so they can give their reasons. What are the hypocrites going to do? They're hypocrites, they, do they have a reason? They don't have a reason. So what they're doing is they're making up lies. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is there. Every one of them that comes to him. This was the situation where I didn't come, Ya Rasulullah. He said, you're forgiven, inshallah, go. The next person comes, you're forgiven, go. The next person comes, you're forgiven, go. The next person comes, you're forgiven, go. One of the, tri- one of the men from the tribes of Bani Salama, did they like Ka'b ibn Malik or not? They didn't, because they said what they said about him, right? He was there. Ka'b is shaky. He has no clue what to do. But he sees that everyone that goes to the Messenger وسلم, is being forgiven. What can he do? What can he do if he wants? He can make up a lie. Because even the hypocrites, the Prophet is saying to them what? Okay, don't worry, inshallah, it's fine. Because does the Messenger وسلم, know whether or not they are lying? Of course he doesn't. He doesn't know the knowledge of the unseen. So Ka'ab ibn Malik, he's there. Now he goes to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And when he goes to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He tells him the truth But the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam First he looked at Ka'ab And he smiled And he said to him Did you not find transport? This is the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Having good assumptions of him Trying to find excuses for him He said did you not have transport? How come you never came? And he I know of you good. I know khair of you. I know that you have taqwa. I know you are someone who's close to Allah. All I know is khair of you. So the messenger could never assume that he wouldn't come for no reason. And then what happened was, he says, Ya Rasulullah, if I wish, I can tell you a lie. And that lie is going to make you love me. But soon after that, that lie will make you hate me and Allah hate me as well. So I would rather tell a truth that you might hate me for now, but love me for in the future. He said, I didn't come for X, Y, and Z reason. He said the honest truth. What did the Messenger وسلم, do? Did he forgive him? The Messenger said, if that is the case, I cannot do anything. Your matter is left with Allah. So Ka'ab went, shaking, he's scared. What can possibly happen? He goes home. He's very sad, sorrow. He's in a state of shock. He, he can't go to bed. He doesn't know if he's forgiven. He doesn't know if he's become part of the hypocrites. That same evening, the Messenger وسلم, he sent a message across the entire city of Medina. And he said, he, he commanded the people of Medina, nobody should speak to Ka'b. That was his punishment. What was Ka'b's job? He was a tradesman, right? He also said, nobody speak to him. Everybody abandon him. When it comes to trade and business, don't deal with him. So Ka'ab, the next morning, he goes out. He's trying to buy and sell. He sees everybody's turning away from him. He says, Salamu alaikum. No one's returning salam to him. He never misses the salah in the masjid. He goes to the masjid. Salamu alaikum. They turn away from him. No one says a word to him whatsoever. So Ka'ab is there and he asks and says, is it just me this is happening to? Who did he go to? He went to the tribesmen of Bani Salama. And he says, look, whatever's happened, the messenger, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has sent this order of everybody to boycott me. Is this happening to anybody else? There were two other people who they said as well. They said, now there's two others that are with you that also didn't come and they had no excuse. Who knows them? Who can mention the two other companions? Hilal, Hilal ibn Umayyah and Murara ibn Rabi'ah. Remember this, I'm going to ask you later. Hilal ibn Umayyah, one. And the second one? Murara ibn Rabi'ah. So he said, okay, where are they though? How come they're not in a state of sorrow? How come nobody's boycotted them? These two, they were old in age. 
So they never necessarily needed to come to the masjid. So them, people were boycotting them if they came out, but they decided to just stay at home. They decided to themselves stay at home, so they weren't suffering as much. But Ka'ab, what does he need to do? He needs to go out, buy and sell and speak to people, and he comes to the jama'ah and everything. Even the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam boycotted him. There's one of the narrations. By the way, you can find this in Imam Muslim, Sahih Muslim. You can find it in his book, in Kitab al Tawbah. It's a Sahih hadith. It's one of the longest hadith. He himself, Ka'ab ibn Malik, is narrating this when he gets to an old age. He becomes old and he starts to mention what happened in Tabuk and everything else, etc. etc. He says, I remember the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, he boycotted me. He didn't even want to look at me. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is merciful. It's not part of his natural nature to be like that. It's not part of himself to be someone who turns away from people, doesn't smile at them, doesn't welcome them. So there was a moment he couldn't hold himself back. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the masjid and Ka'ab Maliki says, I came into the masjid, I went to the messenger, I was looking at him, he was standing there, and I could see he did not want to look at me. Whenever I would turn, he would turn the other way. I gave salam, he didn't even return the salam. But Ka'ab, says, I said, Allahu Akbar, I started to pray. And as I was praying, I could see from the corner of my eye that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is actually looking at me. Out of his mercy, he said, look, he can't realize I'm looking at him, so let me just look at him now. Because this is the tabi'ah, the nature of Muhammad Rahmatan lil alameen. It wasn't that he didn't want to look at him for a personal reason. What was the reason why? It was for Allah's sake. But then Ka'ab, he says, as soon as I say, Assalamu alaikum, and then I turn, Assalamu alaikum, I see he's turned away. Just before I said, Assalamu alaikum, he's turned away. So this shows us that even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam boycotted him. He doesn't know what to do. He's stressed. Who do you think he has remaining? Who hasn't boycotted him? No, not Allah. Allah is not on the earth. I'm saying on the earth. His wife, his family, right? It could get worse. And it got worse. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent a messenger to the to the Ka'bi Malik. He said, the Messenger of Allah said that Allah commands Ka'ab to separate from his wife. What a test. All of this is because why? This sin of staying behind that he committed is a major sin. When Allah and his messenger, they command you to come out and fight in his cause, of course, when that's the case, and you sit back with no legitimate reason, this is a major sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, ma lakum idha qila lakum unfiru fi sabili Allah idha qaltum ila al-ard, aradiyitum bil hayati dunya Oh, you who believe, why is it that when you are told to come out in the, in the, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that your feet become firm on the ground? You don't want to move. Are you happy with the life of this world? It's a major sin. So what does Ka'ab do? Ka'ab is a sincere man. He wants Allah to forgive him. He will do whatever it takes. He's sad. He can't go to sleep properly. He's still going to the masjid, praying the salah. He's in a state of sorrow. His life is going down the drain. What does he do? He goes to his wife and tells her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded me to do this. But first he asks, is Allah telling me to separate from her temporarily or should I divorce her? He said, no, no, just separate from her. So they separated. He said, you go back to your parents' house, live with them, etc. One of the tribesmen of Bani Salama comes and says to Ka'ab, why don't you go to the messenger of Allah and tell him and beg him that your wife, you have no one to look after you. No one to cook for you, no one to look after you, no one to take care of you, and you can't do this on your own. He might let you. Muhammad ﷺ is a merciful individual. He said, Wallahi, I have absolutely no clue what face to go to him with. Look how upset he is with me, and look how upset Allah is with me. I don't have a face to go to him and ask. Please let this be the case. Look at the remorse and the regret and the guilt that he's feeling. So Ka'ab Malik, can it get worse? Who do we rely on in the toughest times? So you've gone to the messenger, your wife as well, taken out Allah of course. Parents, okay, who else? In the UK, what do we do? Not the police of course, but in the UK, what do we do? 
especially the youngsters. The youngsters won't go to their cousins or their parents. They would go to who? Their best friends. Ka'ab ibn Malik's best friend was Abu Qatada. So he goes to Abu Qatada. He says, Abu Qatada, everybody's boycotting me. Nobody's speaking to me. Nobody wants anything to do with me. My life has gone down the drain. The messenger has upset me. I can't sleep at night. I've committed this major sin. I don't know what to do. Every single day he's crying out. What happened? He says, Qatada, Abu Qatada. I swear by Allah, I take an oath with you to tell me the truth. Do you know anything but khair about me? Do you 100% believe that I love Allah and His Messenger? Do you have any doubt about this? He stayed silent. He said, Ya Aba Qatada, answer me. Do you have any doubt whatsoever that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger? Abu Qatada stayed silent. Imagine your best friend. You have nobody else. Everyone else is boycotting you. Has left you. Just for this one sin. <coughs> A third time, he shouts even louder. He shakes him. Ya Aba Qatada, answer me. Do you have any doubt that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger? The third time he replied and said, Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. And he left him. <coughs> this continued, continued, Continued and continued. For a period of 50 days, the narrations mention. What's he doing in this time? He's in his house, home. He doesn't miss the salah in the jama'ah. He never made an excuse because the narration mentions when he says, Whenever I go to the masjid for salah, the other two, Hilal and who was the other person? Murara, remember. These two people are in their house. They're old. They're not going to the masjid or anything like that. They're just staying at home. But the reason why they should have came to the battle despite their age is because they had strength. And the Prophet didn't see it as an excuse. But Ka'ab is going to the masjid for every salah. So he's going to the masjid. Everybody's boycotting him. Everyone's spreading rumors within Medina. His business has gone down the drain. Imagine you today, you commit a sin. And nobody wants to speak to you. Nobody is doing business with you. You can't get any job. Every job you apply for, criminal record. You go to your best friend, he says, Allah and his messenger are the best. I don't know about your situation. Your wife. I mean, everyone is against you. With the command of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna ma'al usri yusran. After hardship comes, ease. Ka'ab ibn Malik was sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does this not show a sincere repentance? Does this not show that he's hoping Allah forgives him? Does this not show that his heart is clean? The fact that he's sad and he's going through sorrow and he's not someone who's just happy and living his life as usual? 50 days of boycott. Finally, one day, Ka'ab ibn Malik for the first time, he decides to pray Fajr on his roof. And as he's praying, he suddenly hears a man on top of a mountain saying, Oh Ka'ab, Ya Ka'ab, Abshir, glad tidings, oh Ka'ab. So he comes down. Everyone in the city, they come. And then there's this gathering. And when he comes, he says, Glad tidings, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wants you. He's given you glad tidings, good news. Because Ka'ab was so happy, he fell into prostration. This prostration is called Sujood Shukr. Then he got up. From the customs of the Arabs is that they gift someone something when they're happy about something. So if someone tells someone something good about them, they gift them. They say, take this. So Ka'ab, as I mentioned to you, he doesn't have anything, does he? Because of his business, khalas, no one's buying from him. He didn't have anything to give him as a gift. What did he do? He took off his shirt. He said, take this gift. This is for you. But now who's calling him? Who said, come? Who's calling Ka'ab Malik? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi So what happens is, he doesn't have a shirt to put on. So he goes to his neighbor. He says, look, I'm in this situation. 
He gives him the shah, he puts the shah on. He goes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited to him and said, Allah has forgiven you. Sorry, Allah has sent down verses about you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down verses regarding you. Now let's open the Mus'haf if you have a phone insha'Allah ta'ala. And we'll look at those four verses that came down because of him insha'Allah. Everybody get your Mus'haf out. Everybody get your Mus'haf. Either on your phone or the actual Mus'haf. Surah Tawbah. Go to verse 117. Surah Tawbah. 117. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah said, Laqad, indeed, Taba Allahu ala nabi. Allah has forgiven Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah has forgiven and accepted the repentance of those who migrated from Mecca to Medina from the companions. Wal Ansar and the believers that were in Medina already and accepted Islam, those companions, Allah forgives them. الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُ Those who followed the messenger فِي سَاعَةِ الْعُسْرَةِ In the difficult time, when the battle of Tabuk was happening, those companions that followed from the Ansar and the Muhajirun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of their sins just because they went with the messenger Is it Tuma Is it speaking of Ka'ab? Or Murara? No. Those companions that followed the messenger the Muhajirun and the Ansar is speaking about them. But what else did Allah say? مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا كَادَ يَزِيغُ قُلُوبُ فَرِيقٍ مِّنْهُمْ These companions, they followed the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in a time where a group of them, a group of the companions, their hearts became a bit hesitant. Their hearts became a bit inclined to not going away. They were a bit shaky. Shall we go? Shall we not? What did Allah say? ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ And Allah forgave them. Allahu Akbar. That is speaking about, Thumma Taba Alayhim is speaking about the three categories of people. Who were they? Those that were excused, the hypocrites, and the three that stayed behind for no reason, that are not hypocrites. This part here, Thumma Taba Alayhim, they had doubts, but Allah still forgave them, is speaking about who? It's the first group that had excuses. Those that were sick, old age, blind, crippled, disabled. Allah says we forgive them. Innahu, because Allah is bihim with them, ra'ufun or loving, rahimun and merciful. Look at this part now. Allah said, wa ala Look. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, listen. Wa ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also accepts the repentance of the three khulifu that were left behind. <coughs> Who are these three? Ka'ab? Hilal? No. Allah said, Hatta idha daqat alayhim al ard. The earth became very, very tight upon them. How did the earth become tight upon Ka'ab? He was boycotted, nobody wanted to speak to him. He felt like the earth was all on his shoulders. Hardship, difficulty. وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُمْ وَظَنُّوا And they assumed, they thought to themselves, you know what? أَلَّا مَلْجَأْ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ There's no refuge, there's no place of saviour from Allah except to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Look, Allah said they realised that there's no way of escape from Allah إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ except to Him. When they realised that, what did Ka'ab do? He still prayed, he sought forgiveness, he still came to the masjid. He, he, had a, he had a lot of remorse and guilt about the sin that he done. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا SubhanAllah. Once they had repented, Allah accepted their repentance. The ending of the verse is what I want, the, the last verse is what I want you all to take home from my lecture, inshaAllah ta'ala. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladina aman, O oh, you who believe, ittaqu allaha fear Allah, wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. And be with those that are truthful. Brothers, 
We're speaking about repentance, seeking forgiveness from sins, turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is commanding us, just like Ka'ab ibn Malik was sincere and truthful. Look, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ What helped Ka'ab was how truthful he was in his repentance. Repentance is not something on the tongue. It's not just something we say, I seek forgiveness. La. It has to be shown in your actions. He, number one, showed guilt, remorse. He, and he showed that what he done was wrong. And he was sad about it. And he showed that in his actions. Number, the second benefit, inshallah ta'ala, is when you are repenting, don't think it's just going to come easy. Allah will test you. What was the test Allah gave Ka'ab through his repentance? No, but what was the test Allah gave? Remember when the man came to him and said, Allah commanded you to separate from your wife. If he was not sadiq, if he was not truthful, would he have not said, there's no one else helping me. I can't do this. Forget this. Like, and he was truthful. Be truthful with Allah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was truthful with Allah rabbul izzah. And he doesn't, he, he has no doubts at all whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hasanat as well. Allah will change their bad deeds into good deeds. I started very late. So I'm going to conclude there inshaAllah ta'ala. I hope you all benefited. Anything which I've said, which is good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything wrong, slip of the tongue. Or a mistake is from me and shaitan. Wallahu al-udallahu wa rasooluhu bari'ani minha. Allah and his messenger are free from it. Barakallahu feekum. As-salamu alaykum.